my friends assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh how are you guys um i hope you all have a good day and of course you have to keep the spirit for today first of all i want to introduce myself my name is wahyu arfando janawanto i studied at Tunas pembangunan university faculty of civil engineering and classic okay on this colorful beautiful and extraordinary days I want to give you all a little insight about irrigation or irrigation system. Certainly not now and here the place. I want to take you to a place not far from here. The distance is about 9 kilometers from here and it will take 20 minutes um, if the traffic is not heavy of course. <laughs> I make sure you will all be impressed. So keep watching this video without lingering any longer. Let's go! Okay, hi guys, here it is 15 minutes from my house and now we have arrived and now we have arrived at the irrigation bridge in Lumpungan Village, Ngesrep, Ngemplak District and Boyolali Regency. Alright guys, look. This is an example of a kind of surface irrigation system. Okay guys, irrigation is the human effort to irrigate agriculture. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right, look at that. Look at that. Okay guys. In ancient times, if agriculture land was close to rivers or fountains, planting was done by direct irrigation to agricultural lands. However, there is also irrigation which is done by using water on containers and then pour it into plants one by one. For irrigation with a model like this in Indonesia is called watering. Um, specifically, here are some types of irrigation used in Indonesia. Let's check this out. Okay guys, the first is surface irrigation, which supplies surface with a water level of about 10 until 15 cm above the surface. Surface irrigation is an irrigation system by direct water from rivers, truck, dam buildings or reservoirs. And irrigation water is then channeled through channels to agriculture. Well, there are primary secondary and tertiary channels. This water arrangement is made by using a water lock. The process is gravity. High ground gets water first. Usually, this type of agricultural irrigation is done by flooding agricultural land to a certain peak. 
flooded into parcels of lands, the surface irrigation allowed drainage of higher channels become a surge of water for the rice fields below. The second is local irrigation. In such a system, water is distributed by way of pipes. Irrigation also uses the principle of gravity, where high ground gets water first. But water can only be spread out to a limited area or locally. The third type is micro-irrigation, also known as water drip irrigation. This irrigation is the way water flows directly to plants. This process can be carried out both on the surface and underground, which is under the root to move to the soil around the plant. This type of irrigation uses a spray device called an emitter. Water coming out of the emitter can spread to horizontal and vertical soil profiles due to the capillary and gravity force. The fourth irrigation is irrigation with spraying. Sprays usually use squirts or sprinkle. Water sprayed is like a mist, so that the plants get water from above, the leaves get wet first, and then drip to the roots. The fifth is traditional irrigation using a bucket. This irrigation is a lot of energy for farmers because the water that is put into the paddy fields must be taken first from the water source by carrying it in a bucket. The sixth is irrigation by the water pumps. These are taken from deep wells and pumped by water pumps and are channeled in different ways like pipes or channels. During the period of drought, irrigation will continue to irrigate the fields. And do you know what the function of irrigation is? For you to better understand, I will tell you some of the function of irrigation for agriculture. Let's check this out. Number one, as a water supply in the dry season due to severe drought can cause difficulties when planting and hamper harvest time. Such irrigation is at the same time useful for organizing the schedule and distribution of water, so that in each season, agricultural land can be watered to fill water needs in agricultural crops planted. Number two, irrigation water deposits that contain mud and nutrients can be useful as fertilizer for plants to make the soil ready to be planted and produce plants that are also of good quality. Number 3. Drain water containing waste to the soil in the lower layer or under the roots of plants using pipes so that it does not interfere with plant growth and development and avoid soil erosions. This can be done naturally or technically. Number 4. Filtering the soil content from the surface into the soil layer cause the level of salt on the surface to decrease. Decreased salt levels are one of the factors that determine the quality of agricultural products. Number 5. Preparing the soil to go through the processing process by softening it up first. The soft content of the soil make it easier to prepare the soil because the hot soil finds it difficult to process it by being plowed. Okay, number 6, raised lowland. Sludge content in irrigation water allows this to happen so that the potential of land for agriculture can be used more optimally. Next, number 7, lowering the temperature in the soil to always be conducive to agriculture. Number 8, the last but not least important is Reduce the risk of soil damage due to drought in the dry season and floods in the rainy season. Well, that is the whole explanation of irrigation. Now you know what the function of irrigation and irrigation is, which turns out to be very important for farmers and greatly determines the quality of agricultural products. After watching this video, I hope 
we can all have the awareness to maintain the irrigation channels around us and not throw garbage into it so that it will not clog irrigation channels or pollute the agricultural land. Alright guys, we are done here and it's time to go home. See you guys. May your day continue to be good and meaningful. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and goodbye.